Good everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we want to solve this problem in mechanical engineering science and the problem goes like this. It says, the following forces act at a point. The first force is 40 Newton inclined at 30 degree northeast. The second one is 50 Newton north. The third one is 16 Newton northwest, and the fourth one is 17 Newton inclined at 40 degree southwest. Now, we are not told to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So, let's start. Solution. The key word there is, we are told that the forces are acting at a point. So, it is a concurrent force not just concurrent force is a concurrent coplanar force concurrent in this aspect that it is acting at a point the four of them are at a point so they are forming a point of concurrence now the other one is they are all on the same plane so that's why they are called coplanar now we are dealing with the bearing here we're having north east north and south so what you do is you draw your four cardinal points. When you draw four cardinal points, you draw your y axis and you draw your x axis. So the top of the y is the north. The bottom of the y axis is the south. The right of the x axis is the east, while the left of the x axis is what is the west. Is that taken? Now we're not told that. The first force is inclined at um, 40 Newton. Is inclined at the first force 40 Newton is inclined at 30 degree northeast, so it will be at this place. So if you look at this, north and east is falling between that aspect, and we know we are going in an anticlockwise manner. That's how we are moving in form of the direction of the quadrant. So the east is the zero degree, right? So so moving that means 30 degree this direction. So this is my first force here. 30 degree north east. So we say north east means you're starting from the east. The east is zero going towards the north. Are you with me? Now the next one we have here is 50 newton north. So the 50 newton is the force and it's going north. So going north, I'll put my arrow there to show you the force, right? So I'm removing the north there and I'm putting an arrow. So it's going towards north. That is 50 newton north. Then the next one is 16 newton northwest now we're not told we're not given any angle the other one was 15 newton north right so it's acting 90 degree why this one we're talking about is 16 newton northwest so we're not told whether it's 30 or 40 but we're told northwest so northwest is falling between north and west and north and west is 90 degrees so it means northwest is what 45 degrees so the angle there is what 45 degrees now the next one is 17 Newton inclined at 40 degree southwest. So we're starting from the south, right? We're moving we're starting from the west towards the south. So that is 40 degree inclined to the west towards the south. That's what it means. So that's what we have there. Now we're not told to find the magnitude. So before we can find the magnitude, we need to bring all the horizontal um, we need to resolve all the force because some of the force there surely the um 40 the 60 and the 70 they are all inclined forces so we have to resolve it so i'm going to resolve it now look at at the north and east there's a force of 40 newton inclined at 30 degree now if i bring out north and east out this way so i will say that this is the horizontal component, so it will be 40 cos 30, and the vertical component here will be 40 sine 30. Now, you've been wondering how did I get this? You can easily click on this link above at the top right corner of the screen, you click on it, and you will get more explanation on that, right? So, we have this, we we'll resolve that force to give us this. Now, the other one again, talking about in the part of the northwest, look at that force. If I bring out the northwest out this way, right? 
the vertical is sine, the horizontal is cos, only because it is inclined at the horizontal axis. So we will now write 60 cos 45 at the vertical, 60 sine 45 at the vertical, and 60 cos 45 at the horizontal, this way. Now, the next one is the 70 Newton. So if I bring out my southwest, bring out that 90 degrees southwest, bring this, this um, perpendicular point out this way, so the horizontal will be 70 cos 40, is cos because it's horizontal, and the vertical will be 70 sine 40, right? So this is what we have now. Now what we've done, we have resolved the forces. We call it resolution of what? Forces. So we don't have business with inclined force. We only have business with what? Perpendicular. We only have business with vertical and horizontal component. Right? So any inclined force, we ignore them now. Now, if you look at this, we said we should calculate for what? The resultant force. And the resultant force, R rule, is giving us the square root of summation of f of x squared plus summation of f of y squared. Right? So for we to calculate the resultant force, we need to look for the summation of f of x and summation of what? f of y. So let's look for the summation of f of x now. So the summation of f of x would be the addition of all the horizontal components. That's what it means. f of x it means force lying along the x-axis. So we have the 40 cos 30, this, is facing the right, so it is what? Positive. Any force that's facing the right is positive. Why the one facing the left is negative. So the next one we have 60 cos 45. So the arrow is facing the left hand side. So it is what? Negative. And the next one is what? 70 cos 40 is facing the left hand side. So it's what? Negative. Right? Now if you punch your calculator, you get to understand that 40 cos 30 will be 34.64 minus 60 cos 45 is 42.426 minus 70 cos 40 is 60.62 so when you do your calculation very well you're going to discover that 34.64 minus 42.426 minus 60.62 give us minus 68.406 newton that is the total force along the x-axis they call the net force along x-axis right now the next one we have here is we look for the summation of fy that is the vertical component. Now, if you look at this now, we have 40 sine 30 facing upward, which is positive, because it is facing upward, plus 50. Look at that one acting along north. It's a vertical force also, so plus 50. Now, plus 60 sine 45 is also positive, right? Now, the next one is 70 sine cos. 70 sine what? 40. Now, it is facing down. So it will be negative. So when you punch a calculator very well, you discover that the 40 sine 30 is giving us 20 plus 50 plus 60 sine 45 giving us 42.626 minus 70 sine 40 is giving us 44.995. So that will have. So if you add and all of them together, you will have the total net force acting along the y axis is 67.631 now if i input the value of summation of f of x and f of y into the equation the expression above for the resultant force we said that resultant force now will now be equals to the square root of summation of f of x square which is giving us f of x is giving summation of f of x is giving us minus 68.406 so i put it there where it has square put my square Summation of f of y squared, so we know summation of f of y is given us the 7.631, so all squared, so I'll put it there. Now, if you look for the square of minus 68.406, it's going to give us um, square root of 4679.38, right? Plus... Four five seven three point nine five. Now, if you add both of them together, you will have the square root of nine two five three point three three, which will now give us the square root of nine two five three point three three will now be nine six one point one nine newton. 
next thing we need to calculate for what? The direction, which is also called the sense. And since it's a coplanar concurrent force, we know that tan alpha will be equal to what? Summation of f of y over summation of f of x, right? That's summation of f of y will be given as 67.631 divided by f of x, summation of f of x will be which is what? 68.406. Well, we we'll negative 68 this is an angle. I'm ignoring the negative now. Now, when I divide both of them, I am going to be having we have in 0 0.9886, right? So that's what we have here. Now, when you now take it, means that our tan theta is what 0 0.9886. So when you now take the tan to the left side, it will now become tan inverse of what? 0 0.9886. So when you press your tan inverse of that, you're going to be having your answer to be what? 44.67 degree. So this is how we calculate for the direction of the resultant force. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.